Well, that was nice, wasn't it? All right, I know last video I said it's spooky month, so we're doing spooky games, but just stick with me on this one, okay? I mean, if I told you space fairy intergalactic chickens were invading the Earth, you'd be pretty shit scared yourself, wouldn't you? But I digress. Chicken Invader is a shoot 'em up game series that started in the late 90s and has since released five games, featuring a mix of casual gameplay, corny storytelling, and silly humor. We'll cover all five games, though we will rush through the first one, since on top of being extremely primitive, it was released at a time before technology was a thing, and as a result it was a pain to record. Hopefully it doesn't strain your eyes too much. Let's get into it. The games tell a story of a race of technologically advanced chickens who are seeking revenge on mankind for the oppression of their earthly brethren. And only you, this here spacecraft, can stop them. The story is silly and simplistic, and even five games in it doesn't really get any deeper than that, but honestly I don't think anyone expects a gripping and intricate story from these games. But anyway, the game gives you a quick introduction and you're off. You move left and right, shoot, avoid the egg so you don't blow up and lose lives, collect the chicken drumsticks to get points and missiles that clear the screen, and you collect these here gift boxes to upgrade your firepower. That's the primary gameplay loop. If it seems overly simplistic, it's cause, well, like I said previously, it is. The game's variety comes from the different way chickens move depending on the wave you're in, the asteroid levels, and the boss that appears every 10 waves. Though this isn't really that challenging, it's just a bigger, angrier chicken that drops a lot more eggs than the usual flock. The waves go on endlessly, with slightly increasing chicken health and egg speed. The game's graphics are simple but serviceable. The design is very clean, the eggs stand out from the background, and so do the drumsticks. It ran well for me on Windows 7 without any major issues outside of not being able to properly record it or alt-tab, though I hear you might run into some trouble if you try running it with Windows 8 and up. It also features a local co-op mode, though due to the game not having an options menu and as a result not having rebindable keys, you'll have to get all crammed with your Game Boys to play this together. It also lacks any sort of gamepad functionalities. This game is free though, although not available on Steam you can still get it from the devs website. And bam, done! Alright, now, the next one is where the series starts getting interesting. Chicken Invaders The Next Wave is the one most people have a big ol' nostalgia boner for, myself included. It features a shitload of improvements on the first game. New features, better progressions and difficulty curve, a final boss and ending... There's a lot here. Well, relative to the first game, that is. We'll start with the improvements and features. You can move around the screen, more chicken and food variety, multiple shot types, an option menu with compatible controls, and an actual soundtrack. Let's talk a bit more about the different shot types. There are three different types, each having 11 upgrade levels. The way you upgrade them is by either picking up their respective gift color or by collecting this thing. The red is good for AoE damage and fast clears, the yellow is good for concentrated damage, and the green... well, I don't like the green to be honest. It also sounds like shit. The way you progress in this game is you start at the end of a solar system in Pluto and make your way inwards to Sun, stopping at each planet and liberating it from the winged menace. In between each planet you get these little joke bits. They're very cute and got a giggle out of me now and then. Expect silly childish dumb humor. As you get near the sun, the game's difficulty ramps up really well. The last few levels will give you one hell of a good challenge and the final boss is quite a good fight. One fucky thing with this game is that for some ungodly reason they pan the audio a lot when you're near the edges of the screen. <laughs> It fucks me up good and hard and I had to play without headphones because of it. Also in this game you get literal asteroid levels and at often times they'll be bouncing on the lower end of the screen making it so you have to wait for them to bounce back up so you can shoot them. It's just boring and happens a bit too often. The third game, Revenge of the Yoke, continues the trend of increased game scope. While on the first game you defended the Earth and on the second you defended the solar system, on this one you defend the entire galaxy. This game is twice the length of the previous one and has twice the weapons to go with it. The new stuff is really cool. You got this rapid fire chain gun, this plasma rifle, and last but definitely not least, this lightning gun. They're all good and satisfying to use, especially on the later upgrade levels. You might have noticed this power bar here. It's an overheat gauge. While in the previous games you basically fired as fast as you could click, on this one you have the options of either holding down the fire button for a steady but slow and energy consuming shot, or spam clicking for a slightly faster but less energy consuming mode. You'll likely be alternating between these so your finger doesn't get tired. It's also a neat way to balance some of the stronger weapons like the plasma rifle. The bosses in this game are a lot better and offer more variety. On top of the regular bigger chickens with faster fire rate, you also have chickens in UFOs with mounted laser guns, massive shot spamming eggs, and chickens that you have to unclothe. Yes, much like in those token etchy anime video games, just with a lot less of the male variant of a chicken. The graphics in this game are very shiny. Although they miss the clean aesthetic of the previous two had, it's still very pleasant to look at. Especially when you fully upgrade your weapon and you get to see it tearing through the regular wave and hamburgers and drumstick fly all over the place. Really satisfying stuff. My main issue with the graphics is that some of the shots can blend in with the background. I don't think this needs explaining as to why it's real fucking bad. Who the fuck had the brilliant idea of making some of the shots purple? 
Lucky this game has a continue button, so if you die one hour in, you won't be restarting. It's still not optimal though, since you start with very little upgrades and you have to face late game chickens that have a lot of health. It makes it so when you do die for some bullshit reason, you have to fight uphill for a bit before getting back into the regular game difficulty groove. The in-between jokey bits are a lot more elaborate now in order to make space for a story of sorts, and I honestly think this wasn't that good a move since a lot more jokes are landing flat on their face. I swear they use the same Star Trek reference like 5 times. The game also features 4 player co-op with online players, so even if all your Gamer Boy mates are far away, you can still play with them. Ultimate Omelette is where the series starts to stagnate a bit in terms of new stuff. For the most part, what this game adds to the table is variety. A lot of it. The game has so many different types of waves to show you that the first time you see an asteroid level is by wave 70. The controls feel a lot more responsive this time around. There's a bigger difference between auto and manual fire. Like, you can definitely tell which I'm using just by looking, while in the previous game the difference was a lot less noticeable. The game gives you side guns that you can use with the auto fire key. This range from machine guns, flamethrowers, and whatever this thing is. The last major thing this game added was rotating stages. While in the previous game all stages were you shooting from the bottom upwards, this time the game will rotate your ship and where the chickens are coming. At first this is confusing as shit since the food stuff still falls downwards, but you get used to it. This game has some weird stuff though, like for example they give you an AI partner and I thought this would be a major part of the game, but no he just fucks off after a couple waves and never comes back. The graphics are essentially the same as the last game, but they did improve on the shots blending in with the background thing. I don't remember ever dying to something and thinking it was bullshit, although the difficulty does feel a lot more held back on this one. On top of the regular food and firepower jobs, you can also pick up these keys. You can use them to unlock various stuff like engine color, weapons from the older games, and the hard difficulty level. And for the final game, Clock of the Dark Side is where I mostly run out of stuff to say. It's just more of the same, really. They added a mission overview screen which is nice, and you can also customize your ship. Though this is mostly just color stuff. The rotating segments feel a lot more clunky on this installment, and they sometimes take you to different planets where you have to avoid the collision walls. This one in particular fucked me up a bit because of my thalassophobia. Yes, I know it's a fucking Chicken Invaders game, but just be nice to me, alright? This is the only game in the series I didn't finish. Well, this and the first one, but that one had no end. I don't think it's a bad entry, I guess just after playing 10 hours of Chicken Invaders you kinda need more new features and stuff to keep you going, otherwise it just feels bland. If you've not played any of the other games, I feel like you would really enjoy this one. And that's about it, all 5 games. Now there is one more thing I didn't mention, there is a Chicken Invaders MMO. Yes, I shit you not. It's currently in early access and has been since late 2018. The reason I'm not showing you footage of it is because the developers said that, and I quote, if you post any videos about this game online, you must include the word early access somewhere in the title. And I really didn't feel like doing that. Plus, the game isn't complete yet and it's missing a lot of features, so I feel it's best not to cover it as of the time of recording. Chicken Invaders is just fun. It's dumb, stupid, unapologetic fun. And I love it. Though the series did stagnate a bit in terms of features after the third game, they're all pretty cheap. And like I said, the first game is free, so try it. If you start feeling that unique soaring sexual high from slaughtering spacefarer intergalactical technologically advanced chickens, then I highly recommend you go through the series. Thank you so so much for watching, I really do appreciate it if you've made it this far, and have a nice day.